following is a presentation of the Big East Conference Television Network. game features the Pirates of Seton Hall versus the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Big East basketball is brought to you by U.S. Air. Every time we fly, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. By Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Sharp Electronics Corporation. From sharp minds come sharp products. By Mr. Goodwrench, the GM expert at participating GM dealerships. When Big East coaches talk about tough buildings to play in, you always hear them mention Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Well, that's where we are tonight as the Big East season is about to get underway. The Seton Hall Pirates are in town, set to take on the Panthers of Pittsburgh. And hi again, everyone. Hi, Mike Gorman, along with Bill Raftery. Welcome to Big East basketball. Should be a great season. Much expected of these Seton Hall Pirates coming in, Bill. Yeah, and I think the difficulty has been finding all these faces some time and then the rotation that P.J. would like to address for the rest of the season. Well, again, pick number one by one of the national magazines before the season started. That put the pressure on P.J. Carlissimo's club. He needs Terry to hair to respond in the backcourt. Jerry Walker already has given P.J. some great minutes up front. He's a big one. Danny Hurley, one of the new faces. Very clever guard, getting a lot of minutes early and teaming with Brian Caver when Terry DeHair is not on the floor in that Seton Hall backcourt. Luke the right, though. The big man could be the key. Luther's going to be a great player. And, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't know when it's going to happen, I, but I just think, I don't think there's any question. He's too gifted. He has too good a work ethic, and he's too nice a kid to not be successful. He wants to be successful. He's willing to apply himself. I think he's got to learn, you know, what it's going to take to be successful in college. And I, I think he needs time. The problem is you don't get a lot of time when you play in the Big East Conference. Pittsburgh, a team that some would say has overachieved already, Bill. Well, I think beating Kentucky uh, awake in the basketball world. Uh, this club, Paul Evans likes this team, which is an interesting sidelight. They're a little more aggressive, and I think the youthful exuberance has made it fun to coach them. It used to be you didn't have to do much homework when you did a Pittsburgh game. It was always the same five starters. But now only Sean Miller is left from that bunch. He teams with Darren Morningstar, Chris McNeil, and Sharif. McCullough, Antigua. Paul Evans likes this group. It's made for a different type of practice. In, in the past two or three years, everybody pretty knew, much knew who was going to start, and everybody kind of picked their spots where they were going to sit on the bench. Whereas this year, we've got nine or ten kids that still think they can start that are really busting every day in practice. I, I think it's made our defense a little bit better. It's made the spirit and maybe even togetherness on the team come a little bit closer. Again, a tough building to play in. What do we look for early, Bill? Well, it's noisy. And, uh, I think Pitt has to shoot well to get the crowd in it, make their free throws. I think Seton Hall is so tough inside defensively, they may take Pittsburgh out of their flow. Okay, we will see what happens. Again, a tough floor to play on. Even though the students are away, it is a packed house. Seton Hall and Pittsburgh are coming up from the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, back with the starting lineups after these words from your local station. Hey, which one looks like your beer? I would say this one. The one on my left. This is Budweiser. And here's Coors Extra Gold. Wait, Bud, wait a minute. 58% of Bud drinkers prefer Coors Extra Gold in a taste test. Looks like a better beer. And guess what else? What? Coors Extra Gold was a two-time winner at the Great American Beer Festival. It's very impressive. Slow brute with that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be. Which may be why. Extra Gold beats Bud. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is back. Look the beer in the dictionary. You probably see a picture of Extra Gold next to it. It was is a time to crown new champions, to applaud those who rose above the crowd. Oh! It was a year to remember. The Minnesota Twins are baseball's world champions. Call this toll-free number now and relive the excitement of 1991 all in one amazing video, The Year in Sports. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the best way to capture all the drama of sports. In your free video, you'll see the finest take their best shots. Another left hook. 
Call now and get your free video. And you'll get SI's 92 Sports Almanac free. It's filled with fascinating facts, stats, and photos, and it's free. Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your free video and almanac, plus 30 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.49 an issue. Save 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Your free video gives you all the thrills of the past year, and you won't miss the excitement yet to come in Sports Illustrated. Call now. Dwight Gooden, the pitcher, the hero, the man. Doc, the video, coming soon from Sharp Electronics. To reserve your copy, send $14.95 plus $2.60 for postage to Doc, the video, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip 11368. And welcome back, everyone, to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh as we're just about ready for Big East action. And it's time for tonight's Kentucky Fried Chicken starting lineups. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. Let's go to our public address announcer, Clayton Hartman. And now the starting lineup for tonight's Big East basketball game. First of forwards for Seton Hall, a 6'7 senior from Bronx, New York. Number 22, Gordon Winchester. For Pitt, a 6'8 junior from Richmond, Virginia. Number 24, Chris McNeil. For Seton Hall, a 6'7 freshman from Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. Number 30, John Leahy. For Pitt, a 6'6 freshman from Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Number 42, Jermaine Morgan. Center for Seton Hall, a 6'7 junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 21, Jerry Walker. For Pitt, a 6'10 senior from Stevenson, Washington, number 33, Darren Morningstar. And the guards for Seton Hall, a 6'4 sophomore from Trenton, New Jersey, number 10, Brian Caver. For Pitt, a 6'6 sophomore from Anstead, West Virginia. Number four, Gandhi Jordan. For Seton Hall, a 6'4 junior from Jersey City, New Jersey. Number 24, Terry DeHare. And for Pitt, a 6'1 senior from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Number three, Sean Miller. The Pirates are coached by P.J. Carlissimo, and coaching our Pitt Panthers, Paul Evans. And we are just about set to go here in Pittsburgh. The Big East season about to get underway, and we'll be back after these words from our local station. It's about moving in. It's about moving on. It's about moving up. It's about moving around. It's about life. Seton Hall University. And you thought it was just about basketball. Here's a quick look at a comparison of these two clubs. And that 7-4 and four is a little deceiving for Pitt. They have lost three of those four games by one point. I guess my question, Bill, is can they out-rebound this Seton Hall club by five? Our rebound jumps out to you because Seton Hall over the years has been very good. But how about the free throws? You don't win close games if you can't convert. Tap is controlled by the Hall. Brian Cable will bring it up. Sean Miller jumps out to meet him. Hit man to man. Winchester looking inside for Walker. Walker trying to go immediately on Morningstar. In and out. Walker fighting for the rebound. Gets it. 
And it's picked off underneath there by Jordan. Quickly to Miller. And a great steal by Caver at half court. Takes it right to Miller. And he picks up the foul. Not bad, though. Sean was dead. Might as well get him early. But Morningstar showing that ability to run the floor that when he was at Navy, I'm sure he didn't believe he could do. Trimmed down. Different player. Sideburns are out of yes. the uh, old days, but uh, you can't have everything. Elvis lives. <laughs> no score here, first minute. Terry DeHair trying to put a move on Jordan, takes it in the lane, gets bumped, no call. Rebound Morningstar. Really quickly the other way, picked up by Caber. The hair's out on Jordan. Tough match in here, nice deflection, but Walker on Morningstar, which tells you what they think of Jerry Walker's post defense. Paul Evans and crew. And Cable with those long arms, defending on Miller. McNeil comes high. Now Jordan, good look inside quickly for Morgan, who's been hot lately. They run that little post curl beautifully. Yeah, he's been doing all right, huh? Worked his way into the lineup. A Seton Hall known for taking good shots. Tough entry. Direct. Point to baseline. P.J. Carlissimo immediately up. And on Brian Caver's case. The screen down. But he's so attentive, isn't he? Great help by Winchester. It's a three-on-one break for the Hall. Caver traveled with it. A little extra and unnecessary. You know, the break was ugly at half court. They had overloaded the right side. Never got their lanes organized. Minute and a half gone, two-nothing pit. Nice little spin move there by Miller to get away from Caver. Jordan will try. Too quick, I think. Misses the three. Walker, nice job with the position on Morningstar. Walker again takes it inside, can't get it down. All pit on the boards, rebound to Jordan. Quickly, Miller gets it right back. You mentioned the old names. They don't have the deep shooting old names, do they? Uh, part of their problem, the long jumper. Nice. McNeil, good follow, but the miss is taken down by Walker. Caver looks up, he's got a three on two, finds the hair on a wing. Misses the three, Winchester over the top, nice rebound, gets stripped. And McNeil, the loose ball. Pretty good non-call, too, Michael. Winchester, a big. A pitch going to have to get some inside stuff from this guy. McNeil taking it strong. Winchester came late, and McNeil's called with the foul. Winchester got the block late. They curl beautifully, as we noted. And Miller, very adept at finding people. I guess they got the charge underneath after the goal. Maybe a little play on. Still 2 nothing here, bottom of the third. <laughs> uh, Inside, Walker ties the game. And a few errors as well, huh? <laughs> McNeil, a kid who I think is going to have to get 15 rebounds for a pit to win tonight. It's a lot, but they just need assistance on the glass. Miller fakes the three. Gordon looked at McNeil inside, who wanted the ball. Sean's going to have to go all the way on one of these just to keep them honest. He's been able to turn the corner. Morgan's not looking for that shot from the corner. He may have to take it just to keep Leahy honest. Inside, they find Morningstar. And they get the bump this time on the hall. I think Winchester over to double up. But that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Seton Hall defense as they look down. But also, if the Pittsburgh players can step in a little bit, Michael, they're going to end up with 15 footers, particularly when they double. Winchester picking up his first foul tied at two, and we go the other way. Another turnover. Morningstar backing in down low. Well, Darren used to get some cheap ones. He's gotten away from it. Get some shears for the burns, and he'll be ready. Third foul on Pitt. First on Morningstar. Winchester takes it outside, long with the jumper. Doesn't get the bounce. Walker and Morningstar battle, and they say it went off Jerry Walker. The Seton Hall's gotten some good shots when they haven't turned the ball over. Another happy coach. 
Paul Evans wanted the foul on Walker over the back of Morningstar. Well, he's had some tough situations already this year, and the league is beginning this evening. McNeil outside, and Winchester picks up his second. Uh, the day closed down, though. That's something you want in your players. When a guy's ready to shoot, you close in on him to get in a defensive stance. He was overzealous. 16-18 to go here. First half tied at two. Miller leaves it down on the baseline. Again, Morgan's really passing up that shot. Even the crowd wants him to take it. Miller throws one up. The yes. hair tracks it down. Sean has to be set over the years. He's not a guy that shoots off the dribble. He's a very sound player. Not that he dribbled that time, but he was off balance. And then he finds the hair on the baseline, trying to leave it for Walker, who didn't cut. Now the hair throws one up, and McNeil is there. He continues to struggle, huh? Lead pass, Morningstar. Nice move. Getting down, and Miller. Well, one of the better ones in the country at finding guys. But the hair continues. Open jumpers not making it. Here's Jermaine Morgan with some hustle. Hold and on. Jermaine will have fun. G-Man. Now that should set up a back cut for Leahy. They're overplaying that turn pass reversal. He should be able to get down the lane. And Morningstar has just picked up his second foul. And again, Paul Evans is up and on the official Sean Corbett in this case. Well, he gets so pumped for the breakaway layup. He's leaning on his guy, and that puts Paul in a hole. They're not big. They don't have the numbers down there. We've got a timeout. 15.07 left to go here. First half, 6-2 pit. You can see the spirit in every smiling face. And Al's having a big party to watch the big game. So I'm setting him up with some KFC Super Buckets. For just $9.99 each, he's getting 15-piece buckets, jumbo buckets of 36 hot wings, and variety buckets with three kinds of tasty chicken. I said, how are you going to carry all these? Oh, maybe that's why I'm invited. The KFC Super Buckets, just $9.99. Get them in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. A lot of cars are taking aim at the imports these days. Well, one American car is very much on target. Buick, here's their latest hit, the all-new 1992 Skylark. Completely redesigned with more power and advanced features like standard anti-lock brakes. Skylark for 1992. It's got everything you've been looking for, plus the one thing only Buick can offer you. Buick quality. Pits up 6-2 with nearly five minutes gone, but Darren Morningstar in a little bit of trouble here now. now he actually fouled with the hands initially, Mike, and he's big enough to three-quarter and then regain position. And, of course, with the six fouls, Paul going with him. 6-2 pit, 15-07 left to go here first half. Quick jumper goes down by DeHair. Defensively, you hate to see that. Yeah, you know they're out of bounds plays. Kids don't react, slide, and get in position. Cable right there on Miller. When they run the pick and roll, Sean is very good at finding the guy that picks for him. Arturas Kanishevis has come in for the first time. He's covering McNeil. McNeil lost him, but missed the jump shot. And again, Walker, which is great position. Caver throws it away, looking for the bounce pass to a crowd. Unnecessary. And then Caver got a hand on it again, and Walker slaps it out of bounds. And with that turnover, Danny Hurley up. And I, I think if I'm Brian Caver, I'll go deep to the trainer's end of the bench. Five turnovers on the hall. Danny Hurley has played very well. It does not play like a freshman, as we said off the top. Now these kids have played all over the world. They got the hold, I guess, on Walker, trying to fight over the top. 
His first in high school. That St. Anthony's Cubs play all over this country. Kids have toured worldwide. Because it's tough for them to play at home, right? <laughs> Very uncomfortable in front of partisan crowds. And he really matched with Sean Miller, who leaves it for Morningstar. He's got that funny half hook, but converts. Four points for Darren, and that's the Pittsburgh lead. Down on the blocks, Walker wants to work on Morningstar. Does too hard off the glass. Luke's ball out to Jordan. He's got Morgan with him on the break, but that's about it. See, you no, know, nice balance, but you can't leave him open. Miller misses the three, and again, it's Walker. And Morningstar wisely getting away. Danny Hurley the other way. Very nice dish down low, and Winchester gets two on the assist from DeHair. Well, what Hurley does, Caver can do, is beat his guy with the bounce, find people. But well, that's quick again, Mike. Jordan can't answer. Winchester there. Why don't you done two for Pitt, Well, you don't have guys in position to rebound. They're looking to get into their set. Mahal a chance to tie here. Don't forget, Kanishan is in the game, can shoot the three as well. So it gives him a little outside, opening up the inside. Wow, that's a force. Not pretty. Miller with that high dribble over the top to Morningstar, who quickly gets triple team. Well, they can gamble because they're not making the outside shots, so they can attack. Anytime the big guy has it, you see a few around them. McNeil gives it back up. Still plenty of time. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 8-6 pit, low scoring game, nearly eight minutes gone. And McNeil's setting up Kanishevis, but they don't, well, they finally do. McNeil, a couple of bumps, leaves it for Morningstar, who didn't want any part of it. And Danny Hurley will be called in the grab on Sean Miller, came with five seconds on the shot clock. Tough time to give it up, but as the scatter report dictates, I'm sure Bruce Hamburger doing most, most of the preparations. Don't leave Sean Miller alone. Daryl Crist will check in and DeHair will go out. And Daryl Mims also is going to check in for Seton Hall. They all want to check in with us mm -hmm. at this spot here. Do we look official or? <laughs> I hope so. Must be the gray hair. But Mims, one of those 89 players from PJ, the big frontline kids, reminiscent of that outstanding team. Terrible shooting thus far, but Miller knocks home a three. 11-6 pick. Karnishevis inside to Mims, and he travels. Yeah, I thought I detected earlier a couple of Seton Hall kids in their post movement lifting their pivot feet. Walker, I noticed before, the hair may have gotten away with one as well. Eric Mobley and Ahmed Sharif have also checked in for a pick. So both teams go to the bench early, and why not, given the way the start is played? Nice help and a grab. Kanishevis. They do get down there in a hurry. First foul on our tourists and the fifth now on the team. I'd say PJ wasn't happy with his starting guards. No who? And Evans getting solid play out of Sean Miller. Problem is he's got to play all 40, I think. That can be wearing. Early out on Miller. Mims doing a nice job three quarter and taking away the passing lane for McNeil. McNeil, a little screen outside there, Hurley able to get by it. Good jump out by Winchester, and Octoris Conditionist comes up with the steal. They're all pretty good denying in there, aren't they? Conditionist will spot himself up around that circle. Jump shot goes down for Winchester on the baseline. And that's the step up in his play. He's making that shot now. He's not only a defender. Half of the Seton Hall points, hit by three. Eric Mobley touching it first time. Kicks it out for Morgan. Inside McNeil. That was nicely done. Sure was. Kanishev is looking to help. Never got back. And three-quarter. Hit by five. Winchester down the blocks to Mims. He kicks it out quickly. Hurley lets one fly. That's way off the mark. Not in rhythm on that one. Sharif, who's not shy, misses the three, and Winchester there. See, not getting much near the basket. Early tough runner, too hard off the glass. Hoped for a call he didn't get. 
Now that's not a good one after the last one. Now you run the club, think club first. Sharif, nobody picked him up. Came up short with it, tough underneath, but coming down Winchester and a foul as Eric Mobley runs over Hurley. Evans getting pretty good play defensively, particularly in the post defense area, and able to get themselves in position in the offense when they run that high low for some easy goals. 10.23 to go. Hit up by five, back after these words from your local stations. You may not have believed an American luxury sedan could challenge the world's best. The new Cadillac Seville STS. Winner of Automobile Magazine's Automobile of the Year and one of Car and Driver Magazine's 10 Best Cars in the World. The Cadillac Seville STS, presented by your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. There's never been a car so acclaimed it could change the way you think about American automobiles. It takes desire and dedication to break out of the mold of an average body. General Nutrition Centers can help you break the mold. With Cybergenics, the total bodybuilding system for serious workouts. It's all here. Supplements, diet and training manual, even a videotape. The Cybergenics Bodybuilding Kit. Satisfaction guaranteed. GNC, the authority in sports nutrition products. Face off with the Sharks, Friday at 10.30 on Sports Channel America. Sports Channel's got college basketball covered. Blue Seton Hall Pirates clash with the Big East. And local favorites battle in the hard-driving Mac Conference. Fordham shoots it off with Manhattan live Saturday at 2 on Sports Channel. 13. Go here first half, and this copyrighted telecast is produced by the authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. And Michael, Jerry McCullough in a little excitement from the tapes I've seen. It gives Miller, who's gone out now, a chance to play the two guard. So a little depth in that area, but this defense inside's been tough. Mims, mm. a rocket off the glass. Here comes McCullough. Seton Hall in a hurry to shoot it. And all those people in New Jersey wondering where Luther Wright is. He's about to go in. Uh, most of the kids on Seton Hall have battled the flu, according to John Levitt, their trainer. But this will be a nice match for Morningstar and Wright. Luther Wright, all 7 2 and 290. At the line, Orlando Antigua. A swell of 290, by the way. Down from? Well, I guess three and change. Yeah. You never want to name the number. A, a pocket full of change, right. I understand. That. A lot of the bakeries in that South Orange area went out of business when PJ got them organized in a physical fitness program. Antigua, 6'7", freshman out of the Bronx. And a shot of life for Paul Evans, according to them. Uh, brings a lot of enthusiasm to the game. 15-8 now as Pitt has opened up a seven-point lead ten minutes into this game. Well, I always say when you got a guy like Wright, let him touch it. Chris looks inside, finds Walker. Gets it right back. A little more patience. And Steps another again. travel, yep. Seton Hall has Wright, Karnisovic, Walker, Chris, and Caver on the floor. Pitt counters with Morningstar, McCullough, Sharif, Mobley and Antigua. I went to their Hall's practice the other day and they looked so sharp for about an hour. And they're just the opposite right now. And you got to attribute some of that to Pitt's aggressive play defensively down low. Morningstar wants to go on Walker, does. Mobley coming hard to the glass. Nice save by Wright, but it's picked off by McCullough. And then Chris comes up with his own steal. Here comes Gabe. Sharif kept the dribble alive, and the layup won't get out. Eric Mobley the rebound. McCullough the up quick for Sharif inside Morningstar. And there's a travel on Antigua. Can't cross it over, ever. 
You got to put it down. He'll learn. Not that it is a walk all the time, although that time I think it was. It's just officials do not permit that crossover step. Had 11 turnovers in 11 minutes. No power game by the Hall. Double down for Chris. And Chris knocks down a three. That's a way to defuse that inside defense, huh? Get him to step up a little. 15-11 pit. Winchester set to come back in. Morningstar, a little running. <sighs> Mobley over the top of Luther Ryan. Luther never stepped to him. You gotta respect the opponent. Mobley, a 6'11 sophomore, right? A 7'2 freshman. They got a foul here on Caver. On the screen on Walker. They continue to make mistakes. Not typical of a PJ club. That's the 17 foul with 8.26 to go here. Pitt has not shot free throws well this year, just 57% from the line. But Antigua is two of two tonight. And he'll be back again. PJ said they recruited him a little bit. And, uh, kind of a kid that uh, has to play. And he just felt he had a lot of players like him. Of course, coming in here, when you listen to the coaches at Pitt, like, they feel it's refreshing. And I think sometimes when you've got guys around four and five years, they just don't like your what? suits, your saints. And this is just a breath of fresh air with some new blood. Antigua, a perfect four for four. And the biggest lead of the night belongs to the Panthers, 1911. Nice job by Mobley waiting on the other side of Chris Screen. Right inside, won't go down, and Morningstar there for the rebound. Up to McCullough. Now Luther is a big kid, learning to use the footwork on Mobley. And Tico missing outside, and Jerry Walker going after the rebound. Here comes Cable. Cable with some daylight reach-in foul from behind by Sharif. Really, a uh, not, not a hustle foul, not using good judgment. Sixth team foul on the Pittsburgh Panthers, but they are up by eight with 7.56 to go in the first half. Buick introduces the new supercharged Ultra for 1992. With 20% more power, 205 horsepower to be exact, Ultra truly ranks among the world's finest luxury performance sedans. The new 1992 Supercharged Ultra from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America. Shark. What goes into some of the world's most innovative business products? Shark thinking. It's why this high-resolution VGA notebook computer fits in your briefcase. Shark thinking. It created Sharp's most advanced high-speed copying system. Sharp thinking. It made the world's first desktop full-color fax a reality. And the wizard electronic organizer a necessity. The one way to meet new business needs with new technology is... Sharp thinking about business. It was a dumb argument. It all started when she said she went to the GM dealership for an oil change. How long did it take, I asked. Less than 29 minutes, she said. Look, well, what, did they do anything else or just change the oil? She said they checked the fluids and everything. In less than 29 minutes, guaranteed, she said, no way, I said. Then she said, why don't you ever believe me? That's when I knew I was in trouble. Thanks. Your GM dealer's serious about putting service back in the service department. So try Mr. Goodwrench Quick Lube Plus for a change. Mike Gorman, Bill Raftery back here in Pittsburgh with the Panthers up 19-11. First night of Big East action. A quick look at the Buick scoreboard. Connecticut, as expected, jumping on Miami early. Might be a tough first game in the Big East for Miami. Syracuse at Boston College and leading by 12, 24-12 in the first. And St. John's and Villanova. That's a real test mm -hmm. for the Villanova Wildcats. And Seton Hall out of bounds on the inbounds pass. Chris, Miami might be still thinking about the Orange Bowl. A tough welcome playing maybe the best performing team in the Big East right now. I agree. Mobley right by Luther Wright. Eric Mobley. Mike, 
tackle away from the goal. It's his advantage. Luther unable to get him up and down. A nice little call from the bench on the timeout. And quickly, Pernishevis in. Speed replacing the bulk. And right there, a lot of apparel left on the floor. 10 point Pittsburgh lead, 21 11 with 7.30. Winchester dishing down low. Walker in traffic. Tip won't get out for Kanishavis. Loose ball to Morningstar. Now, right now, those are attitude misses. I mean, they're not making any, which either attribute to the defense or your head's not in. McCullough finds a way and draws a foul. Mobley's basket won't count, but gets the attention of the fans here in Pitt. They've got an end zone already. In his honor. The foul went to Arturis Kanishevis, so he's the first with three fouls. He comes right out of the game, and John Leahy comes back in. Jerry McCullough, the freshman, will be at the free throw line. Morningstar out, Sharif out, Antigua out, Miller, Morgan, and McNeil all back in for Pitt. And all of a sudden, the height difference advantage Pitt. Luther ineffective, so he's out, and Kanishevis, who can play that center spot and play people away from the hole with the foul difficulties. Pittsburgh 57% free throw shooting coming into the game, and they are five of five so far. Twenty-three to eleven, Pittsburgh. Strong move and two for Walker on the baseline. He's amazing against bigger people. Uh, just a great feel for the game. He's got a tough match now with Mobley. There we go to him, Michael. Well, Color blocks out the play. Mobley comes out. This is where he beat right with the move. I'm not sure he can do that with Walker. And Morgan and Miller, a little confusion there. Neither one reached for the ball. Michael, there was an illegal pick in their triangle set. And then the turnover occurred out high. They were trying to get set, but they earned pass. Very costly. Mobley back to the bench gets a big hand from the pit fan. Screen down again for Chris. Caber. Wow. wow. They're running a play for the other guard. And Brian not using good judgment. And it's a travel on Darren Morningstar. And again, Jerry Walker does such a great job in position. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he doesn't look as though he's got good foot speed, and he does, and he doesn't look as big as he plays. Here's Leahy outside, finds Caver. Spun around, and Miller was still there. Leahy, good outside shot. They're playing tag on him, though. Caver takes it in on Miller, lost the ball. McCullough came up with the steal. McCullough taking it in, foul reach in on Chris. Uh, Brian Camry trying to do things and create for his club and actually causing problems for them. And right here in traffic, you never want to spin or put it behind. Particularly, McCullough reminds me of Muggsy Bogues. He comes from the rear. You've got to be concerned exactly where he is. McCullough, two for two at the line. Comes in averaging seven points a game. If you round it off. Some guys are tougher defensively from behind. When you can't see them, watch out. Getting a free throw clinic out of pit here tonight, Jim. And this isn't a home court advantage that's doing this. This is good play and making the free throws, which they haven't heretofore. Gandhi Jordan looking to get back in. He's coming in for the shooter. Takes down the miss. First free throw missed tonight by Pitt. 24 13. Mike, when you look at Seton Hall, they only have one post guy on the floor. That's Walker. So it's a perimeter team. See him going box to box. They're playing aggressive. I haven't they seen are. this in a Pitt team yep. in a while. I agree. Up tough on the ball, loosening up to assist others. The hair unable to get anything going. Finds Leahy. They know the shooters, too. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Down to 
six on the shot clock. Leahy will have to put it up. Tough shot. Oh. Makes it. Was it tough? Didn't have much space, but Chris wisely, maybe just a little penetration, opened the defense up for Leahy. Oh, a nice penetration. Leaves it from McNeil, leans in, and kisses it home. He is a big load. Makes that jumper doubly tough. Winchester pops out. Can't hit the jump shot. Nice job by Sean Miller to sneak in for a rebound. How about the check out by McNeil on Leahy? I see he looks a little more mobile with the one center and the four perimeter guys. But it might hurt him on the glass or defensively. out on Miller. Walker chasing Morningstar who backs him in. Good kicks kick. it out. McCullough for three. You shoot better at home though, don't you? You don't want to let the local folks down, but all the attention down low, it's bound to happen. You just got to make them out. 14 point Pittsburgh lead. DeHair with the dish underneath, knocked away. I've seen all known for the defense, but Pitt pretty attentive to their business on that end. Great help. They come to their feet here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. We'll be back after these words from your local station. You'd rather walk than drive an American car. You think no American car can match the quality of an import. You figure if it isn't foreign, it isn't for you. You wouldn't give an American car the time of day. Well, in case you haven't noticed, times have changed. Introducing the new Skylark. This is the Buick that's going to change a lot of impressions about Buick. To keep your competitive edge, you can phone it there, fax it there, even beam it there. But there's nothing like being there. With U.S. Air and the American Express card, you get a winning combination. The airline that begins with you and the card dedicated to providing unparalleled customer service. U.S. Air and the American Express card. Keep your competitive edge. You may not have believed an American luxury sedan could challenge the world's best. The new Cadillac Seville STS. Winner of Automobile Magazine's Automobile of the Year and one of Car and Driver Magazine's 10 Best Cars in the World. The Cadillac Seville STS, presented by your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. There's never been a car so acclaimed it could change the way you think about American automobiles. Welcome back to Pittsburgh, where the Panthers are having their way right now, Bill. Uh, Michael Morningstar has become such a force, he can attract a lot of dark jerseys, at home that is. And then Pitt, if they can make outside shots, has got a chance to be a good club. Great balance for Pitt right now. McCullough with six, five players with four. And they'll trap out of this. And Leahy he for three. That'll defuse it. They trapped on the one side. The Leahy at Rutgers was something less than sensational. Think about that one. Morningstar has it knocked away out of bounds. And Darren looking on in disbelief that he wasn't fouled. But a little mistake defensively. Miller couldn't convert that deep one. Just getting that in to beat the five count. Early back in the game, out defensively on Miller. Down series, they almost run a triangle. The boxes and the foul line. Winchester trying to help up there too late, but Walker there for another rebound. Hurley looking inside at Walker, who's battling with Morningstar. And they come to Leahy. The hair has been quiet. Go! 
They really haven't gotten into their sets. Here's one of the few times. And good reaction by Pitt. The hair trying to penetrate in the baseline, draws himself a foul. Could be McNeil, maybe Jordan. We'll see. They are youngsters, and when you look at this Seton Hall team, this first half, they're so out of sync. That's one of the few times they ran it, turned it over, got themselves organized for the double. And when the switch came out, the hair wisely, and he's got the ability, blew by. Gandhi Jordan got the foul, his first. And Terry DeHair will step to the free throw line. 38% from the field. Had that horrible night against North Carolina. Playing with an injured tendon in his shooting hand, but he's going to play with that for the rest of the year. That's what they say. They all had a bad night. But the bounce back game was Rutgers. And then the concern, I guess, is how they're going to mature in this league. And that, that's the key, I think, for this club. I mean, everybody's told them how good they are. Now they have to work at it and develop a synchronization, which the team last year had. I don't think they have that right now. The hair gets in both first free throws for Seton Hall, and the first time in the game they scored four points in a row. So that shot of the wrist there, a little x-ray look. Nice move on Hurley and gets the foul from Walker. Miller not extending the arm. And of course, Seton Hall wanting that particular call. But if he can open it up by turning the corner, now all of a sudden guarding him becomes a dilemma for Danny Hurley. Sean benefiting in a sense from the extra year with his foot problems. A chance to lead this club and turn the reins over to Jerry McCullough. Four points for Miller. That's the magic number for Pitt. They now have six players with four points and one with six. And that's their total. You look at Hurley and Miller, and you almost know that their dads are coaches. They're, they're, they're so sound, clinical. Try one. Can't get the three down. McNeil takes the rebound from Winchester. That's a good shot, though. Gandhi Jordan on the break gives it up to Miller. Oh. Mobley flashes oh. for two. Strength. Jerry Walker for one of the few times. Unattentive. Nice flash. And then the recognition. Under two minutes to go. And the lead back to 13. The hair. Well, there's a break for Seton Hall. That well, doesn't go. Three. That's right. Yeah, that doesn't go. Pitts off. Uh, they didn't have the balance. One guard set that time. Gandhi Jordan picking up his second personal foul as McCullough and Antigua come back in. Mobley and Jordan go out. Make that Morgan and Jordan go in. DJ Carlos Mo with some words for Danny Hurley. Well, that's the other end of this. Trying to explain exactly what you want from a player who's with you for the first time. I mean, that field develops the more games you put together. And I don't think the guards have played as well as they're capable of early this season. Terry DeHair still has two with 143 to go here first half. Seton Hall coming into this game averaging better than 80 points a game. They have 22 with a minute 40 to go, and that's a real credit to the defense Pittsburgh has been playing. They jacked it off early. De hair with three from the line. The lead is 10. A little 1-3-1 one, one out of his old days at Wagner. And they go to this to stir it up a little, maybe cause a quick shot. Obviously, a turnover would be Seton Hall's delight. The only other problem you have on this is weak side rebounding and leaving a wing guy like Miller open for a long three. Miller at that two-guard spot with McCullough on the floor. Good reaction by Leahy. Finds McNeil. Walker is there. First with his head up. Well, you think of it, Seton Hall is only 10 down and not playing very well. Walker, a little double catch, and kisses it home. Oh, and now eight. 
And all of a sudden the shots come a little tougher for Pitt. 33 25. Pitt's had the lead up to 15. From the wow. corner and Tigua for three. A rook. <laughs> what a major stroke late. Seton Hall on a mini run and countering. Hall will look for the final shot of a half. Down by 11. First wiggle in the fingers and the hair pops out. Now Walker. And we got a foul on McCullough as the hair tried to beat him on a cut. Now you wonder about that one, huh? Inexperienced type of contact. Paul Evans up, chatting with his club. That stroke by Orlando Antigua. If he can do that, Michael, is he going to be an outstanding prospect? No question. Already with seven points tonight, only averaging six a game. But they're trying to show the hall, hey, you should have come at me a little harder here. Now, when you think of games this early in the year, the one that jumps out is Florida State beating North Carolina. That shocked everybody. And then you think of Pitt beating Kentucky. The hair, a big miss. Oh. And thrown away on the other end with still four seconds to go. So Seton Hall catches a break. They got to go deep now. And they got to be careful not to throw it out. Lady. It's going to come back. They should let it go. They do. That's exactly the problem. Now they got a baseline inbounds for a quick jumper or a loop. You got Mobley for the loop. And you got jump shooters in McNeil and Miller. Luther Wright coming in to replace Jerry Walker to prevent that loop you're talking about. Well, here's the problem. Miller always takes it out, so you eliminate a deep shooter. It's got to be a team. There's the loop. Mobley! He got and fouled, he too. He sure did. He got fouled. Luther Wright got him from behind. But no call. Paul Evans heads for the locker room. On the loop. No surprise, or it shouldn't have been. Luther not ready, and he got fouled. Uh, Evans up and angry. Look at that fake to the ball, the drop step around, and Luther going for the pass instead of the legs of Mobley. Oh. Got a big time on the forearm there, didn't he? We're at halftime. Pitt in control. 36 to 25. Back with our biggest halftime report after these words from your local station. Tonight's second half of Biggie's Basketball is brought to you by U.S. Air. Every time we fly, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. By Infinity, who invites you to guest drive their full line of performance luxury automobiles. By Kentucky Fried Chicken, nobody's cooking like today's KFC. By Right Guard Sports Stick, antiperspirant and deodorant, anything less would be uncivilized. And by John Hancock Financial Services, real life, real answers. Back at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, it's 36-25. Pittsburgh with an 11-point lead here at halftime. Mike Gorman along with Bill Raftery and, again, Seton Hall. Pick number one in the country by, I believe it was basketball times, but the Pittsburgh, the better team for the full 20 minutes. Well, right now they're not number one in P.J. Colissimo's no. mind, uh, yeah. I'm sure. Pitt has played very well, but Seton Hall obviously not in sync. I mean, not fine-tuned, not the, the smooth type of offense that we've been accustomed to over the years. But uh, you have to consider what Pitt has done, a small team, other yep. than Darryl Morningstar, yep. and then Eric Mobley coming in and, and playing very well at that spot. He sure did. Let's mm -hmm. look at the field goal percentage. And neither team really shot the ball all that well. Seton Hall at 32 percent and Pittsburgh nothing to brag about 39. But Paul Evans will take it as long as it means an 11 point lead. Turnovers have killed the Hall 11 to 8. 19 makes for an ugly first half though. Rebounds again. We didn't know whether Pittsburgh could maintain that edge they have had over their opponents. Well they're doing it here mm -hmm. tonight. 22 to 18 overall leading in that rebound battle and the front courts. Where we thought this game might well be decided, you can see Seton Hall's 15 points and 11 rebounds, 12 and 12 for Pitt. But Pitt has been getting it from some other sources, too. Jerry Walker unable to really establish himself. Well, I, I think the point also is that it's Jerry Walker they're looking to get involved, not Karnaschivas, not Luther Wright. It's strictly a 6'6", very fine low post guy 
but they had to go to four perimeter people and Jerry going box to box and Mobley played him beautifully and Mobley played well on the other end too Bill he was active when they used the little curl off the post he was devastating a strong send it in as Walker for one of the few times is left looking defensively and another newcomer Orlando Antigua really had himself a strong first half made some big free throws early in the game and then was able to come up with a three pointer late in the half so a look at the scoring for both clubs and to hair with just seven and Walker six Leahy five Winchester four and Chris with three Caver missing from that lineup so is Kanishevis and there's Orlando Antigua leading the Pittsburgh scorers with seven and Mobley chips in with six again great balance for Paul Evans club right down the line there. You got to think Morningstar and McNeil not on fire but there's your guy Orlando St. Raymond's in the Bronx uh, one of those very fine prospects out of the New York Catholic League. Obviously Orlando is fired up and ready to go. Morningstar McNeil Morgan Jordan and Miller come out same starting five that Paul Evans put out there to begin the game. P.J. Carlissimo sends out Leahy, Caver, DeHair, Walker, and Winchester. I thought Orlando was going out the way he took that sweatsuit off. Straight up man, traditional, Seton Hall. Caver aggressively out on Miller. Seton Hall obviously in need of a quick start, and Pitt, with a little burst of their own, could put this one away early. Now Morningstar is a guy I think that could do some damage. He's got a variety of shares the high low look. And Morningstar didn't use the three second lane. He should have. Miller will reset the offense with 18 on the shot clock. They stack one side screen down. Morningstar looking to make his move in traffic. Skips through and gets two. It's never pretty. Workmanlike. Six for Morningstar. The lead goes to 13. The hair. Nice. Jump step. More like it. Nice advantage hop. But within the play early on, looking for themselves. Both teams do shoot the ball better in this half. Star again down on the blocks left oh, this time. and he can do it I've seen him do it in some earlier games Darren with a I mean he had the game of his life against Kentucky tough match for Walker giving up all that size the hair again short this time loose ball on the floor and Caver comes up with it Leahy with a lot of aggressive play now the hair tried to force that in the basket instead of shooting it Leahy quick release this time and he hits a three and Morgan tardy well, John can do that Leahy's got eight hit by ten on the ball two minutes gone here second half Seton Hall looks like they're more focused Mike and I would think PJ got their attention a little bit Loose underneath the hair comes away with it gets it ahead to Caver Seton Hall with numbers but not great numbers a little bit of a three on two now they'll reset the offense first half had, had gone up by now but yeah what a well I want the chuck and duck approach which is not theirs nice double again Walker turns this time on morning start and kicks it breaks this guy down the hair a little pull up jumper no Morningstar over the top. Big rebound. Out. <laughs> Miller looking to take Caver. Pretty good dish for Morningstar. Around the double. So it vacates the back. And then it opens the side for Miller. And if you can't contain the dribble baseline, he's going to dish it. He finds people. Inside. That'll be Morningstar over the top of Walker. Darren, who picked up two fouls in the first two minutes of the game, picks up his third with 16.56 to go his second half. And that was a case, Michael, if he had just given up on the pass, got back in position, Walker wouldn't have taken the shot. Ahmed Sharif comes back in. 
Seton Hall gets a fresh 45 off the foul. That's the first foul called in the second half with President three minutes gone. We had about six calls at this time in the first half. That was not pretty basketball. They run a double for Leahy and they get the little nickel dimer. That'll be on Ahmed Sharif, his second, and the second on the team here in the half. And again, a reset of the shot clock. Pittsburgh up by a dozen. The hair comes up shooting and makes a three. When they run what they're supposed to, they end up with quality shots. Nice little out of bounds set. Morning star, the quick kick, McNeil. Over the and top. And that'll be McNeil big time over the top of Jerry Walker. Not a good one. Not a heady play by a normally heady performer. But a little bit frustrating. You know, you mentioned the four points, not getting his shots. So team fouls 3-0. Pittsburgh picking him up here in the second half. And the Hall down by nine with the ball. A chance to get as close as they have been in quite a while. You know, this is like the NBA now. Uh, the point guard makes the call as Leahy shoots the jumper. And sticks a three. And then the, the, the defender tells the defense what they're going to run. I mean, there's just so many tapes and so much preparation. Down to a six-point Pittsburgh lead. And Caver contained the weak side. That's why that stopped the play. Morningstar kicks it. Miller didn't take it. Caver jumped in there pretty quickly. Sharif thinking shot. And oh, DeHare got him. Reached down. A force, too. Defensively in good position. Terry DeHare picking up his first foul in the first on Seton Hall here in the second half. And Ahmed Sharif, a 59% free throw shooter, goes to the line. Orlando Antigua back into the game for Paul Evans. 15-57 left to go here. Paul just shook his head. When the club is making a run like Seton Hall, this makes it an empty trip when you don't convert free throws. Dressing nicely with the new contract. Walker comes down with his 10th rebound of the game. That would start a building process, huh? A couple of those releases. For a guy who's a pretty streaky shooter, too, from the outside when he gets it going. Mm -hmm. Just a look and low. De Hare gets it. Makes another three. Snuck that one in, didn't he? That crept over the tin, but within the flow. 15 now, suddenly for De Hare. And the Pittsburgh lead has shrunk to three. McCullough's going to come back in. Morningstar draws a foul. Now, a lot of analysts say, get a T.O. <laughs> and I know the guy. Pa Paul Evans has a guy like Miller. And all you're going to say in a timeout is get it to the box and let's get an attempt. And when you've got experience on the floor, that's why guys let the game continue. All right, Darren will get a couple at the line here with this club up by three. Morningstar, another of the pit players who has struggled at the free throw line. Mm. That one had no shot from the Not time it left his hand. He had to get his hands up or would have hit him in the chin. <laughs> You usually don't think of self-defense <laughs> at the free throw line either, you know? <laughs> well, that's why they make those nose guards. Morningstar with all the points here in the second half of Pitt. The lead is down to four. We know how hard you work. We'll work that hard for you. We believe in putting people first. To stay number one in facts demands a whole new level of thinking. Sharp thinking about business. Sharp thinking led to breakthroughs like the world's first desktop full-color fax, adding new dimensions to the way you'll do business. Sharp thinking. It's created a complete line of plain paper fax that produce permanent laser-printed documents of unsurpassed quality. Sharp fax, number one in America. Because the way to meet new business needs with new technology is... Sharp thinking.
about business. Now there's a man in a state of full active suspension. This is the only car on the road that has it. It's the car that has the Germans shaking in their leader hose. It's got no shocks. It's all controlled by computer. You want to take it for a spin? You just tell an infinity dealer you've got a Mercedes to trade in. <laughs> they love that. Infinity makes you want to take up driving again, doesn't it? A run by the Hall, sparked by some threes, Bill. Within the, the offense, I mean, we talk about flow, the jargon of the trade, but uh, consistently in recent memory, Seton Hall has put people away by running their sets. And two pretty good strokers when they're on fire. Seton Hall, five field goals in this second half, four of them threes. Important set right here for Pitt. Stepping up the D a little bit, they've got to take away. Caver calls the play. Take away the organization of Seton Hall. Way he able to go back over the line to track that down. 22 seconds on the shot clock. McCullough really all over to hair. They go in low to Walker. Bounce pass nicely and in top. Igor came up with the block. Great assist. McCullough the other way. Now he'll back it off. And Tigua very alert to get involved there. And Walker with a nice looking dish to the hair. Well, they empty out the help. They might be able to get a loop. Morning Star makes his way in. Nice up fake. And he draws a foul. Nice little play by Miller. Morningstar had been pumped up from the timeout to get his club involved. And Antigua and he slapped fives were right here. An easy layup deterred by Antigua staying as his man floated to the outside. And the other end, Morningstar just as alert. He slips that pick and roll pretty good. Slides to the glass and has the confidence to bounce his guy into position for releases, whether it's the hooks or the pump fakes. Jerry Walker, a casualty for the moment with that fourth personal foul. Pitt scored eight points in the second half. Darren Morningstar has all of them. Make it nine for Morningstar in the second half. No one else from Pitt has scored, but they get the lead back up to six. They led by 11 at the break. Seton Hall got it to four with the ball. And, and Seton Hall very small now with Winchester as their post guy. Leahy, nice move down the baseline to set himself up with some free throw. Now in the Rutgers game, Seton Hall looked like they were on the ropes. Bobby Wenzel's club played very well down at the rack. And Leahy stepped up at the key period of the game, whether it was passing on the break or in the half court set or making big goals. John Leahy will get to from Cape May Courthouse in New Jersey. A little too far south for you, I think, huh? on a weekend. Too much drop. A little pressure for the first time. And boy, they got a perfect trap. Follow with that quickness. Screen and a screen down. Four point Pittsburgh lead. 13 30 left to go in the game. Nice job by the hair getting out on Miller. Out of 15 on the shot clock. Oh, showing some nice moves. Eventually tracks it down. Miller's going to have to let one go. Nice. Oh, good look for Antigua counting the foul. It came with two seconds on the shot clock. And good things happen when you break the club down with the bounce. And once again, at a critical time, the experience of Sean Miller, he was going to shoot the lefty if he had to, found the bailout, and Orlando once again on the money with a bada bing. <laughs> 
Leahy goes to the bench. Walker with those four personals comes back in. The Hall has Walker, Winchester, Konishevis, DeHare, and Caver on the floor. Eric Mobley's back in first time, second half, along with McNeil, Antigua, Miller, and McCullough. I get a kick out of the T-shirt. He's got it strapped over. Remember the guys when you were a kid used to put the cigarettes in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one hit tight around that shooting arm. Six point, Pittsburgh lead. The hair. Quick shot, won't go. Mobley big for the board. McCullough skips into the full court. As he gets maturity, as once in a while he'll do some crazy things with the dribble, McCullough's going to break some defenses down. Konishevis, disadvantage in there, but a good post defender. Pitt being very patient here. Last time they took it down to two seconds on the shot clock. And it ended in Miller's hands. Now he gets it with 12. Comes down with the miss, and McNeil just can't find the range. And Orlando Antigua call for the block on Arturis Kanishevis. The problem that PJ Carlos was have with Seton Hall, those injuries, uh, mostly talking about the hair, but Kanishevis early, it took away that flexibility up front, and the guards have never gotten to where they will get. They're just not organized. And when that takes place, then they're going to have the ball moving as the postman opens up. Right now, that's not happening. Faber gets it back from Walker, a fresh 45 on the shot clock. Six-point Pittsburgh lead as we're about to crack the 12-minute mark. Walker turned, and there was a lot of Eric Mobley there. Now Walker goes again, and a block is called on Mobley. Well, Jerry Walker used the arm after to curl, but Mobley should have released. Here's where he bodies up. This is where he gets the foul. Now, you see that little tug? And everybody teaches that a little as long as you don't extend the arm. But the contact earlier, he'll learn. We've got a timeout. 11.55 left to go. Point lead. And we'll be back after these words from your local stations. kids can go to help them grow. A place that keeps them sheltered from the streets. A place where they can learn the skills they need in life. In love. How to succeed. and girls club a place of care think what would happen if it wasn't there support your local club the nhl from modest beginnings stemmed the pride of montreal from hockey's man of steel to a rocket named richard espo bobby and the heroics of bossy shutting the door plus a streaking lafleur from father to son, and the magic of the great one. A propelling goal to Lord Stanley's Cup held high. Celebrate the National Hockey League 75th anniversary this season on Sports Channel. 741, we are back here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. And at the conclusion of this game, and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network, Bill and I will be selecting the Infinity Player of the Game, the selection part of Infinity sponsorship of Big East Basketball. Oh, they got an offense. And I don't know if they give it to Karnishevis. Yep. Uh, Chris was trying to get around. And once again, you got to commend the scouting. I mean, you know what's coming. Get yourself around that pick. Miami surprisingly hanging in there, just down 10 to Connecticut. 
Syracuse still with that lead over Boston College and a close one between St. John's and Villanova in the second half. That's a big game for Villanova if they're going to send any kind of message mm -hmm. after their slow non-conference start. And they have played a lot of good people, but uh, Mobley can't get there for the alley-oop. I don't know about that one. Well, that's one of those. You either bring the house down or you take a seat in the bench. Place. That's right. Or, or you owe the mortgage on the house. At least the coach does. Uh, Miller, two to one on assist to turnover. And there's a little bit of a gamble. Normally three and a half to one. Miller with the basketball here popping out, trying to get got a little bit of the arm, obviously. But you can see a different aggression in Pitt's man to man than you have in recent years. So Seton Hall have 11 minutes and 21 seconds of free throw shooting in front of them now, down by six, 47-41. Daryl Christ had a three in the first half. Excellent free throw shooter, Christ is. Six foot junior. Makes a vote. It's a nice luxury to have when you think of it. If the two starters aren't playing well, you got Hurley and Chris to shape them up. 1 3 1, they did it once. They look for the alley oop. You will notice you'll get some wing jumpers and the ability to offensive rebound against this. Defensively, you're looking for. Are you trying to get them to do something quicker? Maybe the wrong guy take the shot, even though, you know, he might get open and him take it. And hopefully your wings can recover. They've got Karnishevus on the wing to rebound. Full 45 with the kick. Just under 11 minutes to go in this one. And PJ. Stay with it, and there's the steal by Karnishevus. Stolen back on the other end by Caver. Not good plays at this level. Nope. Either way. Well, Kanishevis just wanted to give that up from the time he got it. Well, he knew he was going to get a layup if he got it to him. He should have gone hard to the goal. Look at that hole. Antigua got away with one, but also the angle of the pass, not a good one. Winchester, though, had himself about a nine-foot jump shot. He just passed up. Mm -hmm. So the Hall misses a couple of opportunities here down four. Now that's the shot you're going to get. McCullough for three. I don't know if he can make a ball game, but that was a big goal for Pitt. And McCullough, a little too aggressive, gives it up on the other end. It's so unnecessary. Ten minutes remaining, holding seven, clock stops. Chance to get two and also organize defensively, Mike. Chris is the baseline guy. He's got to run corner to corner. Wing people have to protect the basket. You see Winchester up late, but that was NBA, and you see Bird do it, don't you? Yeah, that was <laughs> three and a half. That was from the Birdland. That's the first point for Brian Caver in this game. Started with a struggle and didn't get out of it. Then he mired. A little wild. Nice, nice job by Karnishevis. His Mobley get up there a little early on that rebound. Good timing. Caver inside. Power move. Walker. Nice looking pass. You mentioned Caver. Silent. Nice dish. So a little three-point burst by the Hall to get it back to four. And they go straight up man to man. Pitt led by 11 at the half. Uh, this is one where you go out of bounds and hold a guy. Miller trying to run the baseline. Chris with the grab. Second foul on Darryl Chris, the sixth on Seton Hall. <laughs> Miller will inbound with a fresh 45. Caver's got his hands full because McCullough can turn the corner. He gets that weak side that Miller gets. 
as he's got right now if he wants to beat his guy. Here's the slip play. And here's the grab by uh -huh. Christigan. Well, he wants to defend from going to the right or baseline side because there isn't any assistance. Chris picking up his third, and the hall now over the limit, so we'll shoot free throws for the final 9.22 of this one. Morningstar in, and McNeil out. This has been a very unlikely performance from Chris McNeil tonight. I think the Panthers would be up by four, and McNeil's been invisible. Well, remember I said to you that he's got to get 15 rebounds yep. uh, if they're going to win. Uh, he has been a silent warrior, usually a major contributor. But some others have played pretty well. McCullough, Mobley, and Antigua. Orlando Antigua. Yeah. I mentioned St. Raymond's father, Charles Cavanaugh, the pastor up there in Orlando's parish. Thought he used to scout for us, Eddie Cavanaugh. We didn't have too many wins when Eddie scouted, but... Uh, was a nice guy, though. <laughs> great in the trouser league. Oh, a great pin by Mobley. As long as it's not over the cylinder, it's okay, Mike. NBA, another story. Mobley gets it back in the blocks and gets fouled. Chris, I think. Number four on Daryl. Yes, it is. And right here, you see the reaction we just mentioned. Mobley, now that may have been on the way down, though. Yeah, That's so. the problem. I thought he got ball, glass, simultaneously. I don't know how my uh, grade school grammar teacher would want me to read that sign, but uh, I guess it has some depth. Larry Lembo just came over to P.J. Calismo and said, hey, it was on its way up. So that's how he saw it, and that's how he called it. 52-46, six-point Pittsburgh lead. Just proves his eyes are as bad as ours, <laughs> huh? Chris in trouble, gets it to Caver. Offensive foul called on Caver. When you leave your feet, one thing, you've got to release the ball in that case because you know somebody's stepping in. Everybody attuned to being in position. And he was there plenty of time. Morningstar offering it up. A major improvement in his ability. And Darren will be at the free throw line. DeHair and Hurley come in the game for Caver and Christ as we start to think about heading down the stretch now with 8.40 to go. Mm. 14 now for Morningstar. Creeping up there with his free throws, too. He was at Navy. Paul didn't have him at Navy, though. It was after Paul left, he decided to come here. And just this summer, went after it. Got some weight off. Different player. Hit by seven. Carnicius pops out. Looks inside for Walker. They go to Walker. And he nice. gets two. Well, Mobley does not react back baseline. That might be their answer. Keep him moving. Single post offense by Walker. Ten points for Jerry Walker. Five-point game. Pitt the lead in the ball. Some guys enjoy dunking, and then there are others that regale in it. And he is one of those, one of the latter. Walker again down in the blocks. They get Mobley with the push before the shot. And that's his third. Right now, unfortunately, Eric is in Mobley on the defensive end. He's not getting down in a stance and facing the ball, but give him the pill down on the block, and you can pull the shades down. Oh, does he enjoy that. Walker at 78% at the line this year. He's amazing, though, Michael. The more you watch games, you don't notice what a factor he is game in and game out. Mobley got the rebound, launched it for McCullough. 
Oh, warning star. Offensive foul. Uh, did they call a foul or say that the, the ball hit his leg as he went up for the layup? Maybe the latter. Yeah. I saw the point from Larry Lembo. That must have been obvious because uh, there wasn't much of a comment from Darren. It'll be Seton Hall ball when we get back 749. Left to go in this one back after these words from your local stations. They say it's a woman's prerogative to change your mind. I disagree. It's her duty. That's why the Ford Explorer is so perfect for me. It can take you from a night on the town to cruising a backcountry road on a whim. Those Ford people understand women. Four-wheel drive with the touch of a button, rear anti-lock brakes. Explorer's ready to go wherever and never asks why. We were going to go shopping, but I think we'll go camping. <laughs> yes, camping. Don't forget the big screen TVs. It's January clearance time at the Wiz, and the warehouse is jumping. We're moving all our merchandise into our stores before inventory. Get the camcorders on. Everything's going. Every brand, every model. Everything from VCRs to cellular phones, video movies, cassettes, and compact discs. The best thing is we're slashing prices on hundreds of items. We want to sell them, not count them. The January in-store warehouse clearance sale. Nobody beats the Wiz. Hey, which one looks like your beer? I would say this one. The one on my left. This is Budweiser. And here's Coors Extra Gold. Wait, Bud, wait a minute. 58% of Bud drinkers prefer Coors Extra Gold in a taste test. Looks like a better beer. And guess what else? What? Coors Extra Gold was a two-time winner at the Great American Beer Festival. It's very impressive. Slow brute for that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be. Which may be why. Extra Gold beats Bud. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is back. Look the beer in the dictionary. You probably see a picture of Extra Gold next to it. Six-point game as we head down the stretch. 7:49 left here at the Fitzgerald Field House. Mike Gorman, Bill Raftery, and now Luther Wright and Eric Mobley will see each other for a few minutes in the middle here. And I think Hurley, Hurley, DeHair, Leahy, and Wright for the Pirates of Seton Hall, and Mobley, Morningstar, McCullough, Morgan, and Miller. M, it's the M guys. Out there. Mm -hmm. And Mike, I, I would think you're going to see Luther touch it a little, get him involved. Well, they really run out at the shooters. Luther lost it. And Good job. They got Miller on the foul. Good job by Luther pursuing the ball. In traffic. He's got to be careful, though. The race will be to the smaller. They're so attracted to the basketball. But look at the pursuit. And anybody's going down when they hit that guy. And so Luther will be at the free throw line where he doesn't really excel. Doesn't have a bad stroke. No. The, uh, the other end's the concern now, how he plays Mobley. That's the tenth foul on Pittsburgh, so it'll be two shots now the rest of the way. get the bounce has nice rotation but doesn't get the bounce well you're in trouble when it hits the tin twice generally but Neil in Morningstar out his growth as a player a lot of people expect wondrous things will take place the latter part of this year and next year should be the hair let's see if they get him they do second on the hair Ninth on the Pirates, and Sean Miller will go to the line. Well, welcome to the Big East. The P's are in the whistles. Contact. A lot of uh, ten foul periods. So Miller. Well, that's the tenth foul on Seton Hall. They're saying now, so everything's a two-shot foul the rest of the way. And look at Miller going to the line. Now they're putting McNeil at the line. Yeah. Well, Sean. Corbin was putting McNeil at the line. Well, over the years, I'm sure Sean's gotten his way with that angelic look as he tries to persuade Sean Corbin. It will be Chris McNeil. Now, how do you feel if you're McNeil? Is, is he putting me down, or is he doing it for the team? That's enough of that, Miller. 
The first point in the second half for Chris McNeil. He has five overall. The Panthers, though, go back up by seven with seven and a half to go. Hanging pretty tough. And Seton Hall's been unable to get over the hump. Got the four once. And that's it. Danny Hurley covered by Miller. And I'm impressed with the reaction on the shooters. And then the inside defense by Pitt. Very strong. The hair trying to hide behind a condition of screen and McCullough. They got a five second call. Was able to dodge it. I'll tell you, this is a tough call because Limbo is calling over here and he had not reached five. Luther Ryan will come out, so will Kanishev as Walker and Winchester return. So now Pitt a chance to open up a 10 point lead or better with the three. They don't need quick shots. Just run their sets. And this has been the best offensive group for Seton Hall, the one on the floor. Miller gives it up. McCullough again makes it again. Dribble drive. 12 points for Jerry McCullough. And the Hall wants a timeout. 6.35 left to go, and they're on their feet in Pittsburgh. The Panthers are up by 11. There's a man in a state of full active suspension. This is the only car on the road that has it. It's the car that has the Germans shaking in their leader hosen. It's got no shocks. It's all controlled by computer. You want to take it for a spin? You just tell an infinity dealer you've got a Mercedes to trade in. <laughs> they love that. Infinity makes you want to take up driving again, doesn't it? My sister was three years older than me. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't quite beat her to the raft. Until that one day. I won, I won! I don't know if she let me win, but I'll never forget it. At at and we know every great athlete has been inspired by someone. As a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team, we salute them all. Maybe I would have made it without my sister, but I doubt it. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sport Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sport Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. We're back, and Pitt is up by 11. And, Michael, that ability to turn the corner, Miller has broken down the defense, and McCullough has stepped up big. He has answered the call. The hair with 15. Leahy shooting the threes, but a 14-4 run in the first half. The difference in this game. Walker, trouble getting the handle, then got fouled by Miller. Who Why? Got there. Right? Yeah. Why? And you're just helping them. You want them to use the clock. You've got the hammer. And that's why Paul's losing a little up there, huh? <laughs> it waves bye-bye when you make mistakes like that. Fourth personal, as you can see on Sean Miller. And Jerry Walker will shoot a couple. I mentioned before the, the offensive group, the best. Chris had played well with this group. Now Hurley has to step up. But what they've done with this group is have Walker go box to box and they get a little more action out of it. Walker makes them both. Hurley, a little pressure of his own on McCullough. A little half court trap one of the few times. They give the foul to Hurley on a hold that I missed. Mm -hmm. Well, Refs like to change position occasionally. Second on Hurley, and again, we're going to be shooting a lot of free throws in the next six minutes and 15 seconds. Jerry McCullough, who has had a brilliant game at the line. He'll get two. Interesting to note that both guys at guard can handle the basketball, can turn the corner, 
And it's beneficial knowing that Miller can shoot the deep one. And if McCulloch can compliment him with his outside shooting when Miller does it, that's a heck of a little combo. What an outstanding night this freshman has had. Points for Jerry McCullough. The lead 11. Uh, Seton Hall historically patient. Now they have to think of shooting a little quicker, getting some quick opportunities. Their hair's leaner goes down. Yeah. 62-53, a nine-point game, and Pitt will be patient. At least Paul Evans hopes so. Now, when you gamble like this, you end up giving up easy ones. So the back people have to pay attention on the traps outside. Don't leave the basket. Down to 20 now on the shot clock. They got the clear again. It's McNeil who work. Kicks it out. Morgan. Air ball. And the foul will be on McNeil. Well, McNeil kicking out for a, what, 20-footer when he, with that frame, could have powered his way to the goal. Reaches in on the miss. DJ Colismo talking to Danny Hurley. Winchester at the line to show. Reading his lips saying, don't gamble. It's something you can't do as you get back in it. I'll tell you, the amazing thing is Pitt's helping seat the hole with the free throw opportunities. The giveaways and no movement in the clock. Well, Winchester, the miss. Karnishevis is going to come back in. So will Antigua. Morgan goes out and Leahy goes out. You can appreciate how good Karnishevis is because he's not there yet. And Seton Hall's a different team with him not able to contribute on both ends. He's a part of the glue on this team. Winchester misses them both, but Walker got the rebound. Oh! Karnishevis up there and coming down with the offensive board. Then McCullough just wrestled it away from Hurley. He wanted it more. And Tigua! That's a big turnaround in this one right there. Got to be alert all the time. Ooh. Under five minutes to go. Turnover Winchester. McCullough. Takes it and draws a foul from the hair. And Winchester actually walked at this end, got away with it, then turned it over. But McCullough stepping up with the jumpers and then just over aggressive in his pursuit of the basketball. You can't be like Karnishevis with a magnificent rebound. And now the bailout and Hurley, in a sense, banged, but not ready for the confrontation. And the guy had a rice doing something awful nice. And he will go back to the free throw line, and he will remember well his first game in the Big East. Pittsburgh bench responding big time here tonight. Well, with McNeil absent, <laughs> he's here, but not performing up to his standard. And there's a reason for this pit lead. Now, this puts pressure on Seton Hall, as mentioned, to score quickly. And what a silly foul again. Mobley trying to defend on Walker. And then Seton Hall not known for the full court pressure, but they're going to have to extend it. It's getting. Under five now, a little nerve-wracking. Fourth foul on Mobley. Caver's going to come back in. Leahy goes out. A little foot speed now. Yeah. Morningstar in, Mobley out. Mobley has played well. That's three in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Seton Hall, a team that prides itself mm -hmm. on its free throw shooting. Hey, hey, hey. 
comes the pressure. Two adroit ball handlers. And they're going to run a trap out of just to make the, make the, the long. But look at this. Nobody back. Morningstar. Well, if you're going to trap, somebody has to look at the 10 and say, I'll protect that. 14-point Pittsburgh lead. Oh, Walker trying to kick it out. And a break. Yeah, it just kind of skimmed off Miller. It wasn't anything Sean Miller did. The pass just hit him, I think, on the way by. Paul Evans wants a timeout, and he'll get it with 4.22 to go in the game. And Pittsburgh in control, 68-54. My friend Al's having a big party to watch the big game. So I'm setting him up with some KFC Super Buckets. For just $9.99 each, he's getting 15-piece buckets, jumbo buckets of 36 hot wings, and variety buckets with three kinds of tasty chicken. I said, how are you going to carry all these? Oh, maybe that's why I'm invited. The KFC Super Buckets, just $9.99. Get them in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. We exercise, we eat right, <laughs> we even quit smoking. So, hopefully we're gonna live longer. Maybe a lot longer. Then one day it hit us. Have we saved enough to live to be 80 or 90 or maybe even 100 years old? state of full active suspension. This is the only car on the road that has it. It's the car that has the Germans shaking in their leader hose. It's got no shocks. It's all controlled by computer. You want to take it for a spin? You just tell an Infinity dealer you've got a Mercedes to trade in. <laughs> they love that. Infinity makes you want to take up driving again, doesn't it? Four minutes and 22 se seconds separate Pittsburgh from a 1-0 start here in the Big East, and uh, Connecticut now spreading it out over Miami, 68-47. Syracuse, wow, big win for Syracuse going into Boston College. BC mm -hmm. has played so well this year. Look at that. And St. John's now trying to run away and hide from Villanova in the second half. Christ comes up shooting. And Tequa up big for the rebound. And with the smack on the glass, too, to say how high I'm up. Uh, quick shots with the whole knees, but you got to convert. McCullough, and he will go to the free throw line again. McNeil just made one, Mike. I don't know if you noticed, after the whistle, just to see if he can still do it. Just to see if it fits. <laughs> A real struggle. Not for this young man, though. Uh, outstanding performance. Well, you need spark, and... Uh, he came in and gave it to this club. I just thought their defense initially set the tone for them, particularly down deep. You never know, huh? Where well, they picked this club, seventh? The coaches picked that. That's the coaches, well, yeah. What do they know? Anyway. Point. Pittsburgh lead as we go under the four minute mark. Hall needs a lot of threes. Now they're trying to go in deep to get that conventional three. Walker with his 16th point of the game. Miller, one of the premier free throw shooters during his career. He's down actually this year at 77%. So a nice guy to have late in the games. He touches it most of the time. Moving on, Chris now gives it up and gets it right back to Antigua. When they do gamble, they must be attentive in the rear, Seton Hall. Now you don't want to foul. Oh, nice play. Pushed by Marty Star. The old yep. barroom shove, huh? <laughs> Nobody's going to call that on you. Again, though, giving Seton Hall a chance to score with the, the clock off. Dead, and look at this slip pad. Nice little play by McNeil and continuing to have his difficulties. And uh, Darren, you can't argue about that one, baby. Early 
Ray's going to come back in for Seton Hall and Chris out. Seton Hall with three guards. And here is Arturis Kanishevis. Played the first couple of games this year, then got hurt mm -hmm. and is just back. Tragic, really, because uh, of all he does for this team. And he's the kind of guy that can slip by unobserved by people because he's not going to get you 30 or 25, but he's going to contribute in all facets of the game, and he has a head for it. And Gets them both. Cuts multi, it to 11. Multi-positional, too, Mike. Yep. And missed when he doesn't do those little mm -hmm. things, as is very evident here tonight. Some delay. McCullough handling it. Twenty now on the shot clock. Now you just don't want to foul if you're Seton Hall at this point. Nope. Make them run their stuff, contest, rebound, and push. Ten on the shot clock. Nice job by Kanishevis. Took Morning Stars passing lane away. McCullough wants to go one on one on Kaver. McCullough on the baseline. Whoa, what a game for this young man. Chalk it up. By the way, he's played a career best. 19 for McCullough. And he's defended pretty good, too. The hair got away with the errant elbow. Caver, the line drive, won't get out. Miller, the loose ball. And Mc McNeil got away with one, too, down that end on Karnishevis. But uh, McCullough's night. And the crowd starts to believe it now. De Hair gives the foul to Antigua. Well, we all know you can't come into a building and play fair. And Seton Hall, and I'm giving them a lot for, by saying fair. This I is think not, you are too, yeah. yeah. Not, not one of their better evenings. And finding themselves is the key, because they're a lot of new faces and people putting into being put into niches that will be conducive to a good year. Jerry Walker there talking to PJ, probably one of the few pirates who can walk out of here if he felt like it with his head up. He I always mean. does. Yeah. I mean, uh, one thing about Walker, game in and game out, he's a contributor. 16 points and double figures and rebounds for Walker, but. This night belonged to the likes of Orlando Antigua. And there it is. Get those cigarettes out of there. Lucky strike. That's why <laughs> he doesn't have the tight, <laughs> the tight arm. I saw him in Guys and Dolls, right? <laughs> uh, Paul Evans, the defense, and, and he mentioned it on that voice, we, uh, voice bite we had at the Open. You know, they're fun to be around. They're more aggressive. They come to practice ready. They're interested, and it shows. De Hair hits a three. three for De 20 points for De Hair, which will be a little deceiving in the box score tomorrow morning. And Hurley reaching in on Miller. That's the guy that you don't want to foul. But at some point in the game, you don't have a choice. They were trying to give it to McCullough. Jay Carlissimo coaching like it's a one-point game. Well, this is the uh, beginning of, a, of a, a long progression of, of teaching. And under fire is when you get the most out of it. And uh, he knows that uh, this is not a good performance by his team. Even the way they gave the foul is not paying attention. And you put this guy, it's uh, money in the bank. And look at this pit club. Almost uh, a Carolina scene, huh? Yeah. Regaling those stalwarts. Miller, as one would expect, buries them both. Pitt will go to 8-4, 1-0 in the conference. Seton Hall to 7-2. And and Chester to the layup. And also something to be said for the tough people they've played. Well, seven and, uh, go to 8-4, and four, three losses by one point. Mm -hmm. well, don't forget, everybody had Pitt down, and there, no team 
that has left the NIT three and one has gone uninvited to the NCAA. And they came out of New York three and one with that win over Texas. And that's 20 for 20 with that number three and one in the NIT preseason. Pass, pass that on to Paul and it'll uh, make his week. The infinity player of the game, not much doubt. Jerry McCullough, the outstanding freshman. 19 points, a career high, and he has a chance to add to that at this moment as he steps to the free throw line. Get those freshmen of the uh, rookie of the week mm -hmm. honors we'll be talking about next time we get together. Newcomer, I guess, huh? <laughs> I don't think he knew what to expect coming in here. And in talking to PJ, he didn't either. He didn't think they practiced the latter stages two days ago well and yesterday well. You practice well, you generally play well. There's the hair burying another three, and a quick timeout is called. It makes it a 10 point game with 31 seconds to go. We'll take this break. But Pittsburgh has this one in the bank. 76 66 with 31 seconds to go. Now there's a man in a state of full active suspension. This is the only car on the road that has it. It's the car that has the Germans shaking in their leader hosen. It's got no shocks, it's all controlled by computer. You want to take it for a spin? You just tell an Infinity dealer you've got a Mercedes to trade in. <laughs> they love that. Infinity makes you want to take up driving again, doesn't it? My friend Al's having a big party to watch the big game. So I'm setting him up with some KFC Super Buckets. For just $9.99 each, he's getting 15-piece buckets, jumbo buckets of 36 hot wings, and variety buckets with three kinds of tasty chicken. I said, how are you going to carry all these? Oh, maybe that's why I'm invited. The KFC Super Buckets, just $9.99. Get them in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. 31 seconds left here, and Pittsburgh, just that amount of time away from a 1-0 record. Paul Evans with a new-look Panther Club, and the word will get around the Big East very quickly that you better be on your toes when you play against these guys because no longer is it just four or five you have to try to deal with. He's got eight, nine guys who can come in and play. New guy. Bench, big tonight. New guy stepping up. Yep. I mean, he hasn't had the same guy do it all year long. And we, I, I just felt strongly that McNeil would have to have a superior game, and it wasn't necessary, and he didn't. No, not at all. The hair comes back in, Leahy goes out. 19 seconds with Chris McNeil at the free throw line. And McNeil has not had much of a game, only six points. Not his usual forceful game off the boards as he averaged 11 rebounds a game coming in. He doesn't have those tonight. However, and Jerry man, McCullough huh? <laughs> oh. with a career high 21, 15 of those coming in the second half. And will he be happy this is on in New York? <laughs> He doesn't have to tell all his buddies, they'll have seen it. Nice. takes it in for two. PJ calls the timeout, but doesn't want anybody to come to the sidelines. He's stopping the clock. They want to keep playing. Yep. Just stop and get organized. And I got to look at the floor against Seton Hall and make sure they don't get beat deep. Gandhi Jordan forgot to go to the scorer's table. Just kind of came wandering into the game. Just a uh, unnecessary. Happens in those final seven seconds of 10 point games. Heck of a win, I'll tell you. Miller says to Caver, I won't do it if you don't. And Jerry McCullough has led Pittsburgh to a 1-0 record in the Big East Conference. Mm. Very impressive performance. Great game. Uh, he sort of fed off of Sean Miller a little bit. Outstanding. Well, Pittsburgh will sit atop the Big East standings when they come out of the newspapers tomorrow morning, and Seton Hall 
still with some things to think about. A lot of talent, but it's not together right now. Along with Bill Rafter, this is Mike Gorman. Once again, the final score, Pitt 77 and Seton Hall 68. The preceding has been a Big East Conference Television Network production.